In the last video, we searched for California on the map, and we were able to see a result in our log. So if we open up the Android monitor, we were able to get some latitude and longitude information, and some other like small information, like just the fact that it's uh, countries, USA, and not really much else. But now we can take this latitude and longitude information, and we can use it to move the camera, and also drop a pin on the map. So that's what we're going to do in this one. So let's scroll down and go into our geolocate method here. And so kind of below where we write, excuse me, below where we write the log here, we're going to just go and move the camera. So move the camera and in here we can pass the latitude and longitude object. So to do that, we can go new lat long and go address dot get latitude and address dot get longitude and then we want to pass the zoom. So we're just going to do like a oops, do a default to our default zoom. And then we can move. So now let's go into our move camera method and in here is where we're going to write the code for dropping a pin. So to do that, we create what's called a marker objects or a marker options object. So marker options and just say options equals new marker options and then we do dot position and we pass the latitude and the longitude so just lat long for that and then we can do a title and we don't have do we yeah we do have a title actually so but I didn't pass it through the method so I guess we'll have to just pass the title uh, through here so I'll do another comma and just do string title and then add a title here and then we can add our I guess that's it actually for our, our marker options and then just all we need to do to set the marker to the map is go M map dot add marker and then pass our options and that's it that'll drop that marker onto the map so we need to pass this title object here so we can do a comma and we can do oops do current location or you're going to say me say my location for that title and then in our other method so in our geolocate method we need to give it a different title and we can get that from our address object so address we can do uh, get get locality, or did we even have a locality? Let's check the log. We had we had no locality, so what do we have? We have an address line, so we can get the address line. So do get address line zero, and try that. See if that will give us what we're looking for. So let's run that. Okay, and click map, and now let's search California again. Actually, here, let's check this marker first because we've now added a marker for our own position. So if I click this, it's now saying my location. So that's cool. And uh, now let's search for California. And you can see it takes us to California and it drops also a marker on the map. And if we click on it, it tells me this is California, USA. It's not really giving me much other information because uh, we're only geolocating. Like I said, we're going to use. Google Places later to get more information like the specific address, phone number, like a, if the location has a website URL, kind of any any of that other information. Uh, let's try searching something else. Let's search like a, a business location. So I know in the demo I searched Universal Studios, so Universal Studios. Let's try searching that and see see what happens. So that's cool too. It takes us to Universal Studios. That one actually does give us an address, the address line. I guess that makes sense. If you're searching just California, you don't expect to get an address because you're searching for a state. You're not searching for an actual location. And if we check the log, it doesn't look like the log. Here we have Universal Studios. And yeah, so we get a lot more information. We get the country code, postal code, uh, subdomain is Los Angeles, the actual address, all that, all that good stuff. Well, I don't really like the fact that it drops a marker on my location, so I'm just going to write a little bit of logic here. So I'm going to say if title dot equals my location, then I don't want to do the marker. So only if the title doesn't equal my location, then we're going to drop a marker. And also I want to write uh, a method at the very bottom here for hiding the, the uh, keyboard because I noticed the keyboard kind of was sticking up even after I was searching, so I want to get rid of that. So we'll just type uh, private void hide soft keyboard. And so this dot get window dot set soft input mode and do window manager dot 
layout params, and then soft uh, soft input state always hidden is what I want. Soft input state always hidden. And then I'm going to call that method every time we search. So I guess it could be even after just moving the camera. So hide soft keyboard after moving the camera. And then also I want to call it after init. So hide soft keyboard. That should be good. So let's run that now and take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, let's click on map and keyboard doesn't open, that's good. So once again, we'll search Universal Studios. It takes me to Universal Studios and notice the keyboard is closed, which is what I want. So that's all working good. You also notice these little icons down here. So this one is, uh, I can't remember what that one is. This one is to get directions. So because I've now searched Universal Studios, if I click this button right here, this will then give me directions to Universal Studios or it'll take me to Universal Studios with actual Google Maps and then I can get directions by clicking this directions button here. But this is a separate app. This isn't the app we're building. This is the actual Google Maps app. So if I press back and I press on this guy, I believe this is Google Places. Oh no, this is this so this is the uh, this is directions. So this is literally a route to Universal Studios. Apparently I can do it in 20 hours. So I could do it in under a day. <laughs> so that's that's pretty cool. All right, so now, um, if you remember, I think in the, in the previous video or maybe the one before that, we, we got rid of that little icon here that would center us on my location. So what I'm gonna do is now add a new image view widget there, a custom one that I'm gonna make, and we can click it and it will center us back on our location. So let's go into uh, activity map, and we're gonna create a new image view widget down here. Give us some more space. So let's go image view and just do like 40 dp by 40 dp and we'll give it an id we'll say first below i guess relative layout one and then do a line parent right so we want on the right side of the screen you can put it wherever you like but i'm going to put it on the right side of the screen and say margin right just of 10 dp and margin top of 10 dp and we'll do a scale type of center crop for the image that we're going to put in here and give it an id of ic GPS because the icon that I'm going to use is going to be a GPS icon. So let's go and get that GPS icon. So right click on drawable, new image asset, action bar and tab icon. I'm going to call it IC GPS. I think it's called GPS. Yep. So this guy right here is the one I want to use. Change it to black. Have a little bit of padding just so it's just so it's touching the edges of the box down here. Go next and next. And then once that's imported, we can set the source. So set it to GPS. And there we go, now we have our little GPS icon in our layout. So now let's go back to map activity and initialize our new widget that we just created. So private uh, image view, I guess M GPS we'll call it. Did I not give it a, I thought I gave it an ID of ICGPS. I did. It's not showing up. You have to rebuild the project and that error will go away. So I'm just going to stop and rebuild. And for some reason it's still not picking that up. Um, ID ICGPS. ID, ID, ICGPS. There, that was weird. Okay, so now we have our widget. Now let's go into our init method. And down at the bottom we'll go, uh, what's it, mgps, set on click, set on click listener, new on click listener. And then we just wanna get the device location. So we can log that also. So click GPS icon. And then that will then center us back to our location. So let's uh, run that and see what we're looking at. Okay, so click on the map and let's go to Universal Studios once again. So it takes us there. It didn't close the keyboard, so not sure what's going on there. I'll try searching it again. Still didn't close the keyboard, so something, something up there. But let's try and center it back on my location. So I'll click the widget, and there we go. It takes me right back to my location. 
I'm not sure why it wouldn't. Uh, it should be after after it moves the camera, it should hide the soft keyboard. Not sure what's going on there. Universal Studio, click enter. Yeah, it's still, so there's a bug there, but either way, I'm gonna end the video here. And in the next one, we're gonna start working with the Google Places API so that when we start typing uh, typing things up here, we're gonna get search results. So I'll open up the test, test app just to show you what I mean. So if I start typing uh, Universal Studios, because that's what we've been uh, looking at, it'll start immediately giving me suggestions for locations. So, and then I can click on one of the suggestions and it will take me to that location. So that's what we're going to be working on in the next one. So I'll see you guys in that next video.